I think from 10 to 15 minutes, um, even 10 minutes um, to totality, you want to then stop what you're doing and actually start to really focus on the environment around you because I think that's when you start to notice quite a lot about the changes in the light. It's, it just goes from a diffuse light to a more directional light, doesn't it? Yes. It just seems a little bit different than, you know, you look around and you think it's almost you're on a movie set rather than being, you know, in a normal every day. And you start to notice a few other things, like the temperature drops, um, the wind might stop, or the wind might pick up, so it just it varies a little bit. You might feel a little bit cool, and as you get closer to totality time, if you look towards the west where the moon's shadow is coming towards you, this is where you start to notice the really, really eeriness, isn't it? It's, it's kind of like this darkening that's coming, and it feels really strange. And I think that this is where we get our primitive feelings of something big is happening, just like you feel perhaps a little bit before a storm, but it's not a storm, it's just something huge and it feels a bit wrong, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's and a primal, almost a primal yeah, fear, you yeah. might say. And it's, it's strange how it happens to me when I saw my eclipse in 1998, when the changes happened so fast in that last few seconds before totality. Time seems to accelerate mm. really, really quickly. Was that your experience? Has that been your experience during these 10 eclipses you've seen? Yeah, yeah, those moments, those, those final moments before totality, yeah, because you get the goosebumps, the hair on the back of your neck stands up, the darkness sort of comes in, and those sudden things happen very quickly. So it's like a slow build up, and then suddenly all these rapid changes, and it's like time really speeds up. Then the moon moves in front of the sun, the arrival of the central shadow, and that's where it's just so gripping. You cannot. You can't be quiet. I think, you know, you think you can just sit there and watch it, but you can't control what comes out of your mouth. <laughs> and I, I just remember all the times that I've been around where there's been crowds of people, people just shout out and scream. My first one, I was in a crowd and I had no idea that I was going, I, I had no idea it was going to be so intense. And I couldn't help, you know, like the, the sound of the crowd just felt like this noise was lifting up. And I was screaming, I don't know what I was saying, um, I could have been swearing. <laughs> but you just lose yourself, you lose your sense of being, um, you don't care, you just are there in the moment. And then you're able to, you know, you don't need your filters at this point because what you're doing is you're looking up and you're seeing the totally eclipsed sun and the moon is completely in front of the sun and you can see for the first time the corona. So do you want to describe what the corona is? It's the outer atmosphere of the sun, and the way I describe it to kids when I do my planetarium shows, it looks like the sun's having a really bad hair day. <laughs> and maybe some people remember the Van de Graaff generator, you put the hand on the ball and it makes your hair stand up. Yeah. That's the way it looked to me, and the color was a beautiful silvery. It's yeah. just absolutely magnificent. You can't believe what it looks like until you actually see it. Now, you were talking about reactions uh, when people see these things. In 1998, now I'm an introvert, and I'm not normally one that uh, is very demonstrative in a crowd, especially in a crowd of people I don't know. I saw mine aboard ship. It was interesting that just as the eclipse was about to end, I was shouting and screaming to myself and really <laughs> didn't know what I was saying necessarily. I let out this big whoop when I saw the diamond ring. Yeah. 